Hey guys, welcome back to Skill Curve. Today I built an endless runner game in just a few hours, all with the help of AI and without any knowledge of coding. I used ChatGPT 3.5, not even 4 for code generation, Leonardo AI for character image generation, and a lasso tool for image editing, all of which are completely free and very simple to use. I'll walk you through the whole process without skipping any steps so you don't have to worry about anything. Now without wasting any more time, let's get into it. I went straight to ChatGPT and asked him, can you give me some game ideas? It should not be text based and then I would need you to assist me in developing it in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. These are the programming languages which makes up the core of the web. Since I wanted a web based application, so I chose these languages. You can go for any other if you want to. ChatGPT came up with these different ideas, among which I chose Endless Runner Game, which is a game where player controls a character who must avoid obstacles and collect power ups while running through an ever changing environment. So I told ChatGPT I would go with Endless Runner Game. Can you please help me where to start from and how to develop it step by step since I don't know anything about gaming or coding. ChatGPT came up with these different steps and the further explanation of those steps which included planning. Among planning I was supposed to select the theme, character, obstacles, power ups and visual style for my game. Then step 2 was setting up the environment, then adding interactivity with javascript, implementing graphics and animations, testing and debugging and finally the polishing. Since I didn't know how to follow all these steps so I simply told ChatGPT, I will tell you about my planning and then I need you to implement the rest of the steps by yourself and give me the code directly. Also tell me where to put that code in my VS Code project. VS Code actually provides you with an environment where you are able to write your code. Here I provided the planning for my game, including my own description for each of the subheaders that it provided me earlier. I actually wanted a 2D game with a cyberpunk theme with those modern buildings in the background. I wanted my character to run on rooftops, avoiding obstacles by jumping over them, otherwise he will die and the game will be finished and a restart option will appear. This is the main flow of the game that I wanted, which will be controlled by the player by pressing the arrow up key for jumping. That's all the functionality that I needed. For obstacles, I chose the gaps between the rooftops, which the character will have to jump over, otherwise he will die and the game will be finished. For power-ups, I simply chose coins which will represent the score of the character. As for visual style, I just told him that it should give cyberpunk wipes, so use the color palette of cyberpunk. So based on my planning, ChatGPT followed the rest of the steps by itself. It gave me the code which included these three files, index.html, style.css and game.js. Then for graphics, it chose basic shapes and for testing and debugging, it told me to test it in browser. And for polishing, it told me to add sounds and effects by myself. And finally, it gave me direction as to how to put the code in my VS Code project. It asked me to create three files index.html, style.css and game.js and paste the corresponding code into each file. Make sure they are all in the same directly. Then you can open the index.html file in your browser to play the game. So I navigated to one of my folders and created a new folder here naming it runner game. Then I opened it with VS Code and just like it told me, I created three files here index.html, style.css and game.js. Then I copied the HTML code and pasted it here. Then I copied the CSS code and pasted it here and press Ctrl S to save. Then I copied the JavaScript code and pasted it here and press Ctrl S to save. Now we have these three files in the same directory of runner game as it told me. Now to play the game we are supposed to open the index.html file. So I will navigate into my game directory and open the index.html file. So here is the game but it is nowhere close to the description that we provided it. So I will head back to ChatGPT. I told him it is nothing as I wanted it to be or according to my planning. I just see two boxes, red box which is still and a green box which moves towards red box and collides with it. I need you to go through my planning again in detail and give me the code again. Your prompt should be as descriptive as possible so the chat GPT is better able to come upon the solution. So the chat GPT came up with the code again and I followed the same process of copy and paste for each of these files and the game got improved to this level. As the game was still nowhere close to my planning, so I told him it has got better than previous one but it is still missing a lot of things. Please go through your code and give me a detailed code again. So the chat GPT came up with the improved code and I followed the same copy and paste process for all these three files. And my game got improved to this level. Well, considering the basic functionality, this is what I needed. 
the score is displayed here and I'm able to make this green character jump by pressing the arrow up key and once it collides with this red obstacle the game gets over. However there is still a lot missing based on my planning. The background, the character, the obstacle, everything is different. So I went back to ChatGPT and told him to go through his code again and give me a detailed code based on my requirements and his knowledge of gameplay. ChatGPT came up with code again which I pasted in my project and this is the result that I got. Well, I didn't see any difference. So instead of asking ChatGPT to give me the whole code again, I decided to tackle each functionality individually. First, I wanted to sort out the problem of jumping. As you can see, the greens character's jump was not high enough to cross the obstacle. So I told GPT about the problem that it was impossible for the character to jump over the obstacle. Please fix that. The GPT came up with the code, which I copied and pasted in my project. And now my character was able to jump over the obstacles. Then I observed that the score displayed here and here does not match. So I wanted to solve that. I told GPT about the problem in detail which he understood and decided to update the score logic. He chose to update the score when the obstacle passes the character successfully and provided me with the code which I pasted in my project. Now instead of continuously updating the code when the player ran, it was only updated when an obstacle was crossed by the character. Then I decided to add a restart button here so that I didn't have to refresh the page every time the game gets over. So I asked GPT to add a restart button when the game is over within the game canvas and it provided me with the JavaScript code which I simply copied and pasted it in my file. And now I was able to see the restart button in my canvas which simply restarted the game. Now it was time to improve the look of the game. So I asked GPT to change the background color to purple and add a black floor for which it provided me with the JavaScript code again which I simply copied and replaced it with my existing code and this is the result that I got. Well the background got changed but my character and obstacle are still not using the floor. So I told GPT that the character and obstacles are not using the floor, please fix that. For which the GPT gave me the updated code which I copy and pasted in my project and this is the result that I got. Well the, it has worked for the obstacle but my character is still not using the floor. So I went back to GPT and told him that the character is still not using the floor. It gave me the code again which I used in my project and the problem got solved. Then I wanted to use one of my own characters instead of this green rectangle but I wasn't sure how to do it. So I told GPT about my situation and it told me exactly what to do. Step 1 was to prepare my character image then load the character image and finally draw the character image. These two steps were related to coding so the GPT took care of it while I was left with the task of preparing my character image. My image was supposed to be in suitable format which are given here and it was supposed to have a transparent background. So for that I headed to Leonardo AI which is a free AI software tool with different features. One of which is image generation from prompts. This is the image generation tab of Leonardo AI. For my image I chose the aspect ratio of 1 by 1 then gave it this prompt and clicked on generate. And this is the image that I got. Well it seemed a pretty cool character to me so I went along with it. Then to remove a background I clicked on this button right here. Then I got two versions of this picture since I needed the one without background so I clicked this one and I clicked on download button. Now as my character image was ready I navigated to my game directory and created a new folder here naming it as images. Then within images I pasted that character image and renamed it to cyber character. Now back to ChatGPT. Well it had provided me with this code earlier and had asked me to change this path right here within the code with my path to the character image. However, instead of updating it by myself, I told ChatGPT about my path so it can have updated version of my code which he can use as a reference for further modifications. And I told him to use this and adjust the length and width of character as well. Also update the whole code so that the collision is now based on the new character's body instead of the old rectangle. The ChatGPT did what I told him and gave me the code which I simply pasted in my project. And it worked as I expected. The green rectangle got replaced with our cyberpunk character and now it was time to change the background as well. I headed back to Leonardo AI and this time I selected the aspect ratio of 16 by 9 and gave it this prompt. Then clicked on generate. This is the image that I got exactly as I wanted it to be. So I downloaded it and pasted it in my game directory alongside the cyber character and renamed it to BG. 
Then I ask ChatGPT to change the background to an image located at this path within my game directory. GPT provided me with updated code which I simply copied and pasted it here. The background got updated and now it was giving some better look. However, there was still a room for improvement since the background was still and it wasn't stimulating any effect of motion or the character running. So, I told GPT that the background should appear as moving backwards since the character is running for better visual experience. And ChatGPT came up with this code which I simply copied, pasted it here and now it was stimulating the effect of motion. Our game improved to a large extent by this visual experience. Now it was time to change the obstacles as well. So I followed the same steps for the obstacle image as I did for this character image. I actually wanted a plasma ball to be my obstacle so I came up with this plasma ball. Then I navigated to my game directory and pasted it along my character. Then I asked ChatGPT to replace the red rectangle obstacle with an image located at this path within my game directory. Adjust the width and height of image and also update the collision accordingly. So ChatGPT came up with this code which I copied, pasted it here and the red obstacle got replaced with my plasma ball. Isn't it cool right? However, there seemed to be an issue as you might have observed here. As you can see, the collision happens even though there is still a gap between the character and the obstacle. I came up with the conclusion that this might be because of the images. As you can recall, we are using images with transparent background. So we might not see the background here, but the background is still there and the code is making use of those images. So although there seems to be a gap between the obstacles and the character, but the images collides here. So for that, I cropped out the extra space from the character image so that it just fits the character and saved it along the other images, renaming it to cyber character cropped. Then I did the same with the obstacle and saved it along the other images, naming it obstacle cropped. Then for the assurance, I told GPT about the whole situation and asked him if I did the right thing. It said yes and provided me the code with the updated paths of the character image and the obstacle image and asked me to replace these paths with the ones that I have. However, I see that these paths are exactly same as the paths in my game directory. So I'll simply go to the top, copy this code and paste it here. Let's check the collision now. Well, the gap has been reduced. However, my character and obstacle has elongated. So I told GPT about the elongation and asked him to fix it. It came up with this code which I used in my project and this was the result. The dimension of obstacles seemed fine to me but the length of the character was still an issue. So I headed back to GPT and saw that it actually had adjusted the width and height properties of the character and obstacle objects and it had asked me to adjust these properties based on my requirements. So I looked for the height property of the character in the above code. I was able to find it here. Now I actually wanted the height of my character almost the double of the current size. So I told GPT to make the character's height 150. It provided me with this code which I used in my project and the size got adjusted as per my need. After that, I wanted to create a jumping effect. For that, I actually needed another photo of my character in which he is jumping. So I made use of different AI tools to generate such image for me, but they all failed. So I had to do it manually by editing this photo. So I searched for lasso tool online and clicked on this pixeler editor. Dropped my character image here. Here I was able to edit my character to look as if he is jumping. The lasso tool actually allows you to select an area by free hand. So with the help of this tool, I was able to select the legs and hand of my character and transform it into a position where it seemed as if he was jumping.
So this is the jumping character that I came up with with just basic editing skills. Then I cropped the image to just fit the character and saved the image alongside the other images and renamed it to cyber character jumping. Then I told GPT to use image located at this path for the character when he is jumping. GPT came up with this code which I simply copied and pasted in my project and the jumping effect was produced. Now, although we had cropped the images of our character and the obstacle, there still seemed to be an issue with the collision. So I told GPT about the problem and asked him if it was possible that the collision can be based on real dimensions of character and obstacle since I have used images with transparent background instead of taking whole images dimension. GPT was able to understand my concern and it provided me with the updated code and asked me to replace the existing collision detection code with this updated code. So I copied this code, came to my JavaScript file and replaced my existing collision code with the updated one. Then I gave the indentation so that the code looks neater. And then my collision got perfect. Well, my game was almost complete. The only thing that was missing was music. So I asked GPT to add music to the game and told him about the design and positioning of the button and asked GPT to provide the whole JavaScript code so that I didn't have to modify specific lines of code. GPT did come up with this code and asked me to adjust the path to my music file. So I downloaded some music and head it to my game directory, created a new folder here naming it music. Then I got into music and pasted my file here. Then instead of adjusting the path by myself, I simply told him that this is the path to my music file, update the code accordingly. GPT came up with this code which I simply copied and pasted in my project. And my game was finally ready. Well, it is something of an achievement for someone with zero coding knowledge. Now I could have kept modifying it further like making obstacles appear at random intervals so that it was more challenging for the player or making my character slide as well. But I chose to stop here since it was enough to give you guys an idea of game development. So just like that, you can build any game in any technology that you want. You just have to keep asking ChatGPT until you come upon something that you desire. If it doesn't come up with correct result from your prompt the first time, ask again with a bit modified prompt. Then again and again until it gives the correct result. That's the whole process. I myself provided some prompts more than 5 times until it came up with the correct result. So with that, I will conclude this video for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching.